Greetings, it's Arch Mage Fang here again with another book review. Um, this time I am going to review RuneQuest. RuneQuest is um, it's an old game, it's probably nearly as old as D&D, &D, um, and it's set in a realm known as Glorantha. Uh, Glorantha is a Bronze Age setting with weapons of bronze and copper and things like that as opposed to iron. Um, a few fantasy tropes as well, such as um, there's elves and dwarves and things like that, but they're very tied to their nature. For example, uh, dwarves are made of stone and elves are made of plants and tre trees and things like that. Uh, so basically elves are tree people and dwarves are, well, stone people. Um, it's also set in a way where there's no such thing as wizards because everybody can cast magic. Uh, they do this via a system using runes, and these runes, when used, can grant bonuses and things like that to the character, but can also allow them to cast different magic. And also, it's not a case of um, like with wizards in D and D going and buying spells or learning spells every level. In Rune Quest, to learn spells, you join a cult. <laughs> you join a cult and learn magic, and depends on your rune affinity. Depends on whether you can, and. Uh, how far you get in the cult depends on whether you can cast that magic or not. So it's very common in this setting to use swords and shields and axes and things like that, but then also be able to cast magic. Um, there's also another form of magic called spiritualism, which is more shaman-type magics, like talking with ghosts and exorcisms and things like that. Yeah, it's um, done by Chaosium, who created a Call Cthulhu series, so it's very similar. Um, in fact, Roller's statistics is the same in this as it is in Call of Cthulhu. For example, for uh, all your stuff like strip, uh, let's see if we can find it. Ah, here it is. So, for example, it's 3d6 of strength, dexterity, con, power, and charisma. Power is what you use to cast magic. Um, and then 2d6 plus 6 for size and intelligence. Um, you also get modifiers depending on what runes you're affiliated, affiliated with. So, for example, if you're affiliated with water, then you can get bonuses to your dex or your charisma. Um, depending on what tribe you come from as well, gives you bonuses and penalties. So, for example, if you are a bison rider, you get plus 2 to your size and minus 2 to your dex. So, there you go. Um, it's very... It's not as class orientated as D and D either. Um, what I mean is, I mean, yeah, you get warriors and stuff like that, but you don't get like adventuring classes. You get more like, occupations such as um, chariot drivers, bandits, uh, farmers, fishers, craftsmen, blacksmiths, that type of thing. Um, you can be a philosopher or a scribe. Um, yeah, you also come from like I said, come from different tribes and things. Uh, also, to note, iron is very, very rare in this. The only people know iron is the, the dwarves, the ones that are made of stone, and they are not very, shall we say, fond of giving away the secrets of iron. So yeah, bronze weapons. It's just make it interesting. It's a bit different in your medieval fantasy. Uh, how skills work it is the D100. You have a percentage of the skill. So, for example, if I had a character with 45 in bow and I want to shoot that bow, I would roll D100 and try and get under 45. Um, 1 to 5 is a crit. 95 to 100 is critical fail. It's a very interesting um, game to play. I'll be honest, um, although it is Bronze Age interesting, I haven't really played much of Glorantha. Uh, because I tend to take the system and change it up because it's very, very adaptable for other settings. I've used this to set um, adventures in the Roman Empire, for example, or in Britain in the Dark Ages with different with the Vikings and different Saxon uh, kingdoms. Yeah, it's it's very good. Uh, the set itself, uh, it comes with, obviously, the, the book itself, Role Playing Grand for it. So this gives you everything from character gen to 
the story of the land, all your tribes, uh, the history, um, which is uh, part of your character generation. You have to decide on your history. You can even roll for it to decide what happens to your parents during the, um, the area you're playing in, and so on and so forth. Uh, you're also at the bestiary, which gives you all your monsters. Um, there are monsters in this which are quite weird. Um, for example, you get uh, troll kin, which are like trolls, but yeah. To, for example, you got dark elves, which are more fungi, so they're more mushroom people. Uh, beast man, yeah, troll kin. Here we go. Um, troll kind of weird because they can either be small or big, and they tend to live in dark caves. Think, think like Gollum or, or the cave trolls from Lord of the Rings. You know, you know the cave troll, that big fucking monkey. That's a that's a troll kind. Uh, obviously, you've got undead. Even trolls have cold well. You also got ducks as well in this, like a, a duck race who. Basically, they live near the river, as ducks do, but live near on the river. But they also have um, a fondness for death. It's weird. Uh, dragon newts. Got the gold giants. Uh, yeah, here we go. He also got dwarves made of lead, copper, and tin. I don't have the secret line. Uh, also got dwarves, and dwarves can create golems as well, which is kind of thing. You've got nootlings, which are newts. Uh, Tusk Raiders, yeah, Tr more trolls. Let's see what we've got. So I haven't, read, I haven't really read through the beastie area yet. Like I said, I tend to set my own settings, so I don't really use the beastie area, I just tend to create. Uh, different characters. Oh, Chaos Monsters, here we go. From the Chaos War, that's a big thing. So you've got Brews, who are like satyrs, but are very, um, how do I say it, very raidy. They're basically like half animal, half man, and they do a lot of raiding, and, um, you know, the... The forceful, the forceful idea of the, the R word, I'm not going to say it, you should do a workout from there. Uh, we've also got the brew who are based off diseases, ghouls, yeah, you know, twenty ogres, vampires. You basically got all your fantasy monsters, but with a bit of a twist, really. You got dinosaurs, dragons, gargoyles, griffins, uh, rock lizards. Uh, zombies, monsters, giant spider, yeah. So in essence, you you got like you also got um because because we're going around for set. You also got like your prehistoric creatures. So you got your dinosaurs, your mammoths, and stuff like that as well. And yes, they can. And yes, mammoths can be mounts. I think in this. Um, it's also kind of weird because they don't really ride horses. Horses aren't a big thing in this. So you end up riding things like bisons and llamas and. That type of thing. Rhinoceroses, war zebras. So you can ride that type of stuff. Got your elements, but you've also got like moon elementals and stuff like that. And yeah, let's see. Raves. Also terrors as well. Okay. So yeah, you've got the bestiary, which is good. Um so yeah, brilliant, brilliant system, brilliant setting. Um, although I confess, I, don't, I might, if I get a chance, run it with the Gloran for setting. I need to study it a bit more, but I think I could pull something together. Because again, I tend to um, use my create my own setting and then take it from there. Um, I did, however, so I'll see you get in the box set. Uh, the box set is pretty expensive. This cost me about £100, so probably about $130. Um, 
so it gives you it gives you this stuff as well, which is like uh, Game Master Adventures. So you got that. So what you've got in this is a plethora of stuff. You got this, which we got the obviously you've got your screen. You turn it around. GM screen. A lovely jubbly. Fucking beautiful piece of art. Love the art again. Uh, you got pre gens. Get started with. They got different maps. You've got uh, world map, you've got the map of Dragon Pass, world map, map of Apple Lane. Some of the seasons. Oh, the calendar. If you really want to get in depth. Uh, all the basic stuff here. Uh, Game Master reference. And then, of course, you've got a book which has a blether of adventures in it. Um, like Apple Lane and things like that. I did run Apple Lane. It went really, really, really well. Um, just to see if I could run it. It's really good. Um, definitely worth a try. Um, another thing to note, like unlike D&D with... You know, armor class and things like that. It works a bit differently. In this, um, it's based on a rating system, so it depends on what you want to do, depends on where you go on the initiative. Um, I tend to use the old rune quest rules and use uh, strike ranks, which you have so many. So, say you can create this is based on your dexterity and intelligence divided by two, and it gives you a certain amount of strike ranks. So, you've got like four, so in your turn, you could use. So for one, you could use to attack someone and then use another one to defend. So say you're in combat with somebody and you're swinging your sword and you've used all four. If someone from behind attacks you, you can't defend because you've used them all. So I think that adds a bit of more fun to it, really. Um, yeah, so how it works is you roll to hit. If they've got um, any of their strike points left, they'll roll to either dodge or defend using the shield. And if they hit, how it works is you have hit locations. So you have a head, arms, torso, legs. So you can roll and say hit their arm. And if they lose enough hit points, you basically like smash their arm in the mace or chop their arm off, or which I think adds a just a bit more in depth to D and D. To be honest. Um, also to note that if when they get hit, they'll have armor. So if they've got a bronze plate and they hit them in the torso, and your bronze plate is say I don't know worth ten points and you roll 2d6 on a die and you get 11, then one point will go through because 10 will be absorbed by the armour. Um, again, good good system. I think I think like uh, the Dark High, it's a bit... It slows down combat a bit, but I do find it's a bit more realistic in the fact that you can basically chop off arms and chop off legs and gut people and, you know, decapitation. Um, but... All in all, yeah, it's a it's a good it's a good setting. I like it. Um, I like the rules. I like the idea that anybody can cast magic, so you don't have to just have. Because I'll be honest, I like playing wizards in most games, or you know, people with powers, psychers and Warhammer, or psionics in sci-fi games, or you know, wizards in fantasy games. But coming from that point of view, I do think the idea that no matter what you play as in this in this setting, you can you can attempt to cast magic, and you can actually cast magic using runes and stuff like that, and so you can still be um, a farmer and stuff like that. And if you wanted to throw a fireball, um, I, I just think that's very unique. I think that's very interesting. Um, I do like the hit system. Uh, I can't really find rules for called shots, so I tend to just do the minus. Uh, Minus 15, to your, so say you've got 50 and you want to try and chop a leg off, then it'll be, minus, it'll be 35 you have to get under instead of 50. But again, that's just ha sometimes you do have to make your own rules for it. But all in all, it's an interesting new setting, Bronze Age, as opposed to your medieval fantasy. Definitely try it. Um, if you if you don't if you don't want to spend an exorbitant amount of money in the whole box set, then um, I'm pretty sure you can find some quick, pretty find some quick start rules or something like that, or you know, 
have a look around. Um, yeah, all in all, solid game. I like it. Uh, I haven't played much of it, to be honest, because, of, like I said, I make my own settings for it. But it is but Glory and Fab, with a bit of research, is definitely something I'd like to run or take part in if anyone else is running. Because I just think it's, a, it's different and interesting. And again, um, you know, hitting different areas as opposed to just you hit with a sword for nine damage and the ability to cast magic no matter what you can do. So, yeah, Bronze Age, very interesting. Tribal Warfare, get into it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, also playing cavalry is quite fun as well, charging in with, charging in on a, like a fucking ball with a fucking bronze spear is quite interesting. So, all in all, get it played. So, yeah. Well, this has been Archmage Fang again with another book review. So, adventure on.